Hi everyone, I'm excited to show you the Mega R2D2 build. Now this model is actually not for sale and it's made by Metal Earth and it, what it is is actually for uh, display purposes so it is a scaled up version of the regular R2D2 model that they would normally sell and um, for the most part it is just a scaled version so all the parts are very identical to the smaller version except there are a few little parts that were added on that were flat in the original design but they added these because it's a larger scale you're able to put in these small pieces now that are actually large so this was actually a unique build and uh, as you can see it comes in a box and I actually built this for at play toys for their display and at play toys is actually a retailer that sells a lot of different types of uh, models so they have like the wood model kids the sheet metal kids and etc and they have a store online and they also have a physical store that you can visit so you should check them out at atplaytoys.com uh, no and they're not paying me to say this you know they're actually friends of mine who are who own the store and you know i've been doing a lot of uh, models for their displays recently especially during this coronavirus uh, stay at home and it's been actually very helpful for keeping me sane while i've been home and i went uh, on a quick trip to daiso and bought a bunch of different types of pliers and snippers uh, just to test them out because the original toys that I had weren't adequate enough to do a lot of the detail work and I especially wanted to look for a, a long nose needle plier and as you can see right now I'm wearing gloves because I just wanted to make sure that I didn't get any fingerprints on this R2D2 model um, it's just because since it's going to be a display model and sometimes when you're working on it with just you know no gloves on they, you get these fingerprints on and if you're uh, not wiping it down as you model it, you might have little corners or crevices where you can't really reach later on properly to clean. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that you know I got every part very clean as possible by uh, wearing gloves. The only problem was I had to keep changing out the gloves very often just because it kept ripping, especially with the sheet metal models. The edges might be a little bit sharp or enough to uh, puncture the glove and slowly it just starts creating a bigger, bigger hole. And when uh, you're bending pieces for sheet metals, what you're going to end up doing a lot of times is finding any object that's round or cylindrical around your house to see if it'll bend. And in this case, I was using the X-Acto knife uh, holder, and in this case, it was a thicker holder because it was for the number 2 blade instead of the number 11. And it was actually the perfect shape for those round pieces that I was bending. One thing that's interesting to note about this model is that it is actually easier to build than the regular size R2-D2 that's uh, on sale. And the reason why is because as you can see here, that piece on the regular size would be really hard to reach in without a tweezer. And um, with the larger size, it was actually a lot easier to get into these parts and be able to have a nice grip uh, plier and be able to twist it around. The only real downside to the larger scale model is that um, because it has a larger surface area, uh, dents are more prominent, you can see them more, and the curves are uh, less forgiving in the sense of because it's larger, you're able to see with your eyes that it is not a perfect circle. While when it's a smaller model, if it's not perfect or you know there's a little bit of a dent or something, you don't really notice it as much just because of the pure scale of the model itself. Now just a little more twist and then I'll be done with the dome head of the R2-D2 unit. I have to say the one tool that I used the most for this build was the needle nose plier with its smooth uh, inside finish that actually did not scratch the sheet metal versus other pliers that would actually scratch it because of the serrated edge. And I actually don't know how I was able to do any of the sheet metal models before I had this because it made it so much easier with this one tool. Now for the main body part, um, it's actually two pieces that forms a cylinder shape and how I went about doing this and how I usually do like these concentric shapes is that I actually start from the edge and work my way in towards the middle instead of working from the middle out. And what I've noticed is that if you work from the middle out, at, by the time you get to the end, it's a little bit harder to bend the shape um, as it gets a little bit more stiffer. So by being able to work from the end, I know that now the end pieces will actually be in a nice curvature shape. Another tip for these uh, cylindrical shapes are to start off with a slight arc 
over the whole sheet metal and then slowly work it towards a concentric shape. Um, instead of trying to bend your one piece to the right shape as you start, uh, what you want to just do is just kind of make it arch a little bit and then a little bit more and then a little bit more and making sure that it's even across as you do it. And so it might take you about three or four uh, repeats before you actually end up getting the shape that you want. When you're working with the pieces that are being attached to the body, uh, make sure to understand if that piece is going to be placed as a recessed piece inside the body or if it's going to be attached on the outside and it's going to be protruding out. And the reason why that's really important is that that will tell you if you need to bend the shapes forward or backwards and so that it, the detail piece is showing on the right position. I made the mistake of actually bending it the other way and then uh, realizing the mistake I would bend it back 180 degrees and that's really important trying to avoid that specific uh, motion is that if you're using the normal metal earth pieces a lot of times they will snap when you bend it too far from one direction to the other but I didn't have this problem for this model because the sheet metal was a little bit thicker so it was a little bit more forgiving when it came to bending the pieces but if you ever run into this problem one good tip is that you can always go to the metal earth website and go into their support form and you can request replacement parts by sending a photo of the part that you're requesting from your manual and the reason why they do this and they don't allow you to just take their PDF and circle which part you need they actually want to verify that you purchased it by you actually taking a photo of the physical manual of the part that you need and then they will give you the replacement parts for free I've mentioned this in a previous video before but there are two ways of attaching the sheet metal pieces together. Um, there are these tabs for each part that you're supposed to be attaching or you're supposed to be securing. And one method is to twist those tabs and the other method is to bend it. And right now, as you can see, I'm bending all these parts together. And the reason why you're bending in these parts is that it's going to be visible from the outside and the twists don't look uh, very nice. And so the bend parts are for exteriors and when you're actually attaching it from the inside and you're not going to see those uh, connections, that's where you would actually twist them. And the guide is actually very clear, the manual itself, um, they will actually have these markers, one for circle and one for triangle, where circle is for you to bend and for triangle is for you to twist. So if you just look at the manual very carefully as you're building it, um, you'll see what you're supposed to be doing for the best results. Building the original R2-D2 unit by Metal Earth was actually very helpful even though this was years ago. I believe I built it probably 5 or 6 years ago and it actually helped pre-visualize this build that I'm doing years later. There are things that I remember making mistakes on specifically years ago that I somehow recalled when I was touching the pieces again, almost like a muscle memory telling me not to do what I did last time. And so I was able to actually preempt a lot of my mistakes that I've done the first time around. And so uh, I guess the lesson learned here is, you know, practice makes perfect. Being able to do it once ahead of time actually helped me build it again the second time a lot better. It's a really great feeling when you have a pre-bent piece that needs to snap into another part where uh, you actually bent it properly that actually fits into the holes without having to adjust any of the tabs or the bend and it kind of feels like you know you just got the right part or the right uh, bend right away and it just feels really nice to be able to just snap it in. Uh, I hate it when uh, you bend it all and you realize that either the it's too wide or it's too narrow and won't fit in properly and you have to readjust all your uh, sheet metals just to fit it into the small holes that you're given. Now the middle leg is complete and I'm going to attach it to the bottom uh, of the cylinder that will be attached to the body, the main body later on. For this build, it's actually broken up into about 5 parts, which is the head, which is the dome shape, and then the cylinder, which is the main body, then the main track, which is the first uh, middle leg, and then your two side legs, and then once you're done with all those pieces, you're actually gonna assemble it together onto the main body to create the R2-D2 model. What I'm creating right now is the attachments for the side legs. Uh, they're actually accessories 
um, that are going to be attached to the main leg body itself for and so you can see that there's a set of two that I'm going to attach to each uh, side arm and all these little pieces will be attached to the arm that actually gives it its detail because the arm itself is actually pretty simple in terms of the shape and the build as you can see here it's just this one single piece that you're going to be bending uh, to create the overall uh, part of the arm for these curvatures, what I like doing a lot of times is using a plier and then putting at a slight angle and then uh, giving it enough pressure, a slight pressure, an even pressure throughout and just keep uh, pressuring until I go into the middle of the curve and then you're going to have a nice smooth half circle and you do it on the other side too. And then once I'm done, I would usually use like a curved edge, like in this case I used the X-Acto knife to be able to kind of even out the smoothness of the curvature um, just so that it'll look nice because if not a lot of times when you're putting too much pressure in one part what happens is that you're not going to get even circle as much as you're going to get these kind of like weird warp shapes so it's actually really important to be able to apply uh, the same amount of pressure uh, throughout the whole uh, part when you're actually bending it when I'm working on bending the tabs that are on the sides or an edge of the sheet metal, what I like doing is using my plier and then kind of using the side as a leverage to be able to kind of bend the tab 90 degrees. And it'll, it may scratch the inside, but at least it'll keep the outside from being scratched so it actually has a very nice clean finish. I'll be honest, when I was working this part, I had no clue what part this was. I knew it had to do with the arm, but I wasn't sure exactly which part of the arm it was. Um, it wasn't until the shape started taking shape, I guess, that I realized that it was the base of the arm itself. And this is kind of where the R2-D2 uses uh, to stand and also roll around. Um, it's never really shown in the movies too often, but you know, he has beetles on the bottom um, to be able to move around. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be some Star Wars fans who are saying, no, it shows it in the movies. Uh, I just never really thought about it or noticed it, you know. So um, it's just one of those little things that you don't really think about. And, you know, you just see him roll around and you just kind of don't question it. There's a lot of twisting when you're um, building these sheet models. And it is something that I discovered probably the third model that I was building for one of these Metal Earth uh, builds and it, I always just kind of bent the tabs because I thought that's just what you're supposed to do. I never really clearly read the manual before and I think it was my third model when I finally realized that there uh, an option to do the tab and then I started thinking that that's what you're supposed to do and they started twisting all the tabs instead except it some of them became unsightly and I don't think it was till like the fourth or fifth model where I finally realized that you know they actually gave you directions on when to twist versus when to bend the tab and you know I kind of felt really dumb in that sense of being able to figure this out like after a few models when it was actually clearly written in the manual. When I was building this arm piece, or I guess it's called a leg, um, one of the pieces actually did snap off when I was bending the uh, sheet metal over 90 degrees because it kept moving around too much. Um, I actually ended up not recording that part so I wasn't able to show you guys. But so what I ended up doing was using super glue and uh, gluing it from the inside so that it doesn't seep out. And you, cause when the super glue dries on the metal, it kind of leaves like a white stain or white mark as it dries out. So it's very unsightly. So what I ended up doing was kind of uh, using the glue on the inside and then propping up the sheet metal and then holding it in place until it dries and sometimes it takes a long time for it to dry so uh, you know if you actually had a model building kit there is a type of super glue where you have a spray that you can purchase and when you spray it it will instantly uh, dry the super glue but the problem is when you do use that it will actually uh, make the whole glue white and kind of frosty um, so it's only used when you're trying to conceal the glue or you don't really don't care because this is going to be an area that you're not going to see. Um, so that is a little mulling tip for your super glue if you ever have to use it. I don't know if all super glue is allowed to uh, quickly set that way using the spray, but uh, when I went to architecture school and we did a lot of model uh, building, uh, the one that we used a lot was called Instacure and uh, I used to call it the purple glue because it came with a purple label and there's a brand 
around a spray bottle that you can buy separately called Instaset. And the Instaset will be used to spray onto the Instacure and it'll dry immediately. And a lot of people don't know that there's this thing called um, Uncure, um, which is actually used to unglue uh, super glue. And what it does is that it actually dissolves the glue itself. And I've used it a lot when I accidentally glued my fingers together when I uh, was in college. And this wasn't, you know, done on purpose. But it's just that we used to do a lot of model buildings for our studio classes. And um, there were a lot of times where, you know, since we're working so quickly and we're trying to just use Instaglue or Instacure to uh, make sure that everything bonds quickly, we tend to get sometimes messy. And the unglue saved me a lot in terms of not just ungluing my hands, but I may have glued the part the wrong direction or wrong orientation. And the unglue uh, allowed me to be able to remove that piece. It won't actually dissolve it cleanly. So what you have to do is just, you know, you'll use it to remove it and they may need to use a jacto knife to kind of scrape off the remainder of the glue. So I actually looked it up online and it's not called unglue but it's actually called uncure. Now that most of the pieces are put together, all that's left is the dome head that will be attached to the body. Um, it was a really fun build but it was very time consuming. I believe it took me a whole day to build this model. Uh, normally uh, the sheet models will take maybe anywhere between 3 to 4 hours but in this case it did take me a whole day to build. The last few tabs to bend and now I will have a complete R2D2 model. Uh, it's called the Mega R2D2 and I've stated before that it is actually not for sale, it is for displays for retailers. And here's the final product, the R2D2. It looks absolutely fabulous. I kind of wish they did have this for sale so that other people can build this too at home, but it is a massive model. And for comparison, here is the original R2-D2 by Metal Earth and its design comparison is the Mega R2-D2. As you can see, it is a lot taller than the original. Um, this was really fun and I really hope that they do sell this in the future because I think it's just a great model. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this long video of the Mega R2-D2 model. Um, if you liked the video, please subscribe or watch the other videos that are on my channel. Thank you.